We're going to be talking tandem models today, looking at six of the most popular, or at least the most advertised, models on the current market. Tandem models serve a unique purpose as far as I see it, generally having less desirable characteristics than side-by-side -side models for two children due to poor maneuvering and terrain capability, less storage space, and unequal access to one's children, yet in exchange offering the possibility of maximizing use with one child as well, and for this reason are ideal for an age difference of two to three years between siblings where you'll be spending the majority of your time using the stroller as a one-child model. And as a result of this, in my opinion, it's actually quite important that the model you choose has competitive capabilities in comparison to single-child strollers as well, because in order to facilitate that second child at all, tandem models are necessarily larger and heavier, and the cleverer manufacturers out there use these factors to an advantage. Building their one-child configurations is something more than one would get with an ordinary mid-sized model, by providing a full-sized and fully kitted seat, as well as increased terrain capability, while the more clueless manufacturers, by contrast, will often take this equation from the opposite perspective building a dedicated inline two-child model, and then making sure that you know you can remove one of the seats for a significantly inferior one-child experience. And today, this difference then is going to be the most important key to how we'll be making our judgments as we compare and rank these six models from worst to best. And at the bottom of the pack then is a Cybex Gazelle, the cheapest model that we'll be looking at today, which is really the model's niche, an attempt by Cybex to show that they can play the tandem game too and undercut everybody else while they're doing it. The Gazelle is very much a double or bus type tandem model in my opinion, being built so long front to back and with such small seats that its only really useful configuration is as a two child model, where preferably both kids are younger than two and a half or so. And please note that as a front loading model in this two child mode, as well as in that highly advertised shopping mode, the Gazelle feels quite heavy and cumbersome to maneuver as well as to tip, a bit like you're driving a freight train. Thus, in the end, while there are a couple of positives to the model, the core of the chassis is decently sturdy, as it must be in order to bear the weight of two children, and the seat frames use Cybex's lie-flat capable Lux design, which a lot of people like, the negatives just don't seem worth it to me, in that, in addition to the small seats and poor drivability, both in single and two-child configurations, as a gold line model, as opposed to a platinum line model, Cybex seems to almost have deliberately built the Gazelle to feel cheap, in particular with regards to the textiles, but also in a generally loose fitting of peripheral elements like the seats, sliding adapters, and rear wheels, which make the model a bit rattly and rickety right out of the box. And that leaves, in my opinion, the only real draw of the model being that price, and well, you get what you pay for. Next up, and beating out the last model by only a hair-thin margin, is the Wave, a heavy-duty tandem tank from Silvercross. Like the Gazelle, the combination of a long front-loaded design with small size seats and poor terrain capability make the Wave both subpar as a one-child model and cumbersome to maneuver as a duo. Though, unlike the Gazelle, the Wave doesn't feel cheap, just ill-conceived, and as a result, while the textiles are of a decently luxurious quality, the main reason that the Wave didn't place last, my general feeling of using the model is that it's heavy, stiff, creaky, and bulky, both to drive as well as to lift and pack away. And in addition, poor mechanical choices are to be found all across the chassis, from the Wave's loose handle and weak locking mechanisms for the fold, to its problematically designed brake system, insufficient suspension, and front swivel wheels that are likely to develop wobbling problems down the road. The model also doesn't need to be as heavy and bulky as it is in my opinion, as there's a good deal of inefficiency with the overall construction that could have easily been done away with if Silvercross would have just spent a little more time looking around at what their competition is doing and a little less time designing all those blingy bits. Alright, moving up into the midfield teams, our next model is the Thule Sleek, the only foray so far from this otherwise very sports-oriented manufacturer of three-wheelers and bicycle trailers into producing four-wheeled reversible seat models. And unlike the previous two strollers, one of the chief positives of the Sleek is the large full size of its main seat. As a tandem, the Sleek is also a front loader, though it's a bit shorter back to front than the Gazelle or the Wave, and is built with a rigid, lightweight frame which makes it a tad less cumbersome to maneuver, though it's still quite heavy to tip. And in addition, the overall engineering on the Sleek is both sturdier and more efficient than the previous two models. On the negative side, however, there are a few pretty serious faults as well, in that the textiles are quite cheap feeling in my opinion, on par with the Gazelle, the model suspension is so stiff that it often feels non-existent. And lastly, though it's actually always a bit of a problem with all tandem models, the Sleek in particular has a lot of limitations in two-child mode, with how the seats, bassinets, and car seats conflict with each other in terms of allowing for reclined positions while not making one of your children feel as though they're stuck in a coffin. Tandem manufacturers always love to put out those charts of all the nifty looking setups that can be achieved with their models, but ask anyone who's used one and you'll find that at least a third of those configurations are generally not actually practical in the real world. 
Pushing forwards and coming in third then is a Newton Demigro, which despite unfortunately marking a return to the smaller seat size of our first couple models, though not quite as small, actually has a variety of highly positive attributes, starting off with the fact that it's a rear loading tandem model, which, though this means a loss of storage capacity in two child mode, does allow for both better access to two children simultaneously and greatly increases maneuverability and tip ability in tandem mode, as the center of weight remains at the middle and rear of the chassis and thus doesn't impact your control of the model's front end. Note here that, with front wheels on the smaller side and relatively minimalistic suspension, the Demigro is no off-roader, but with the rear loading, it at least doesn't get that much worse to drive with two children as front loaders do. In addition, the Demigro is quite well engineered, with sturdy bars and connection points, simple and intelligently designed mechanisms, and good strong tires. In fact, the Demigro actually has the best tires for the whole lineup in my opinion. And it's also not really unpleasantly large or heavy as a single child model either, as Nuna has been quite good with streamlining the added length and reinforcement needed for that second child. For these reasons then, if you live somewhere relatively smooth, this is actually definitely a model worth considering, as it feels to me like a good base of operations model for the all-day on-the-go urbanite, especially with the seat raised up to give better access to its spacious shopping basket. Okay, taking silver today then is the Jewel Geo 2. Jules' style of engineering and design is very much oriented towards longevity, and in fact, if longevity were our measuring stick, then the GO2 would actually get top spot, due to its use of thicker, durable materials and a simplicity and intelligence of design that not only limits smaller and more breakable components, but also superfluous functions altogether, in the off chance that they could create problems later on, leaving only those characteristics that contribute maximally to comfort and ease of use. On the positive side then, in addition to the emphasis on longevity, backed up by a lifetime guarantee by the way, the main seat is of a decent size, the textiles reflect the quality one ought to expect out of a model of this price class, and the tandem configuration is rear loading, meaning the same two child driving advantages that I mentioned regarding the Demigro, though with one inch larger front wheels as well. While on the negative side, all that focus on longevity and structural reinforcement makes the GO2 pretty heavy, and the suspension is also rather minimalistic, making this again mainly an urban focused model. But then, if longevity and mechanical minimalism are higher on your list than weight and off-road performance, then this is also definitely a model to consider when looking at tandems. And last up then, coming in first place for these models, as well as on the wider tandem market in my opinion, is, if you hadn't guessed already, the Epa Baby Vista V2, which gets top spot at the current moment precisely because it best epitomizes that specific quality that I mentioned at the beginning, that in exchange for only the added size and weight that it absolutely needs for its tandem mode, of all the models here, the Vista does the best job of also being better than comparably capable single child strollers, in mono mode as well. Note that this is a tandem model with a longer history of development than the other models in this comparison, built to rival Boogaboo in the old days, and despite a couple nitpicky criticisms I have towards the brake system and swivel locks, which are not really issues as long as you lubricate the model, and the fact that it is front-loaded when using it for two children, the Vista V2 simply does it right in all the ways that count, and that it's built simply and sturdily, predominantly of metal, it has a great size for its main seat, quality textiles, and unlike all the rest of these models, it has an amazing suspension system that in combination with decent sized front wheels for the current tandem market, makes the model more off-road capable than most strollers in its size and weight class. And for all this, it's also easy and intuitive to use and maintains a weight and size profile that is close enough to single child models to be considered even if you're not looking at using it as a tandem. In any case, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. If you'd like to know more about any of these models, we have standalone reviews for each of them, and links have been added in the description. In addition, if you are currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find that by following the link in the description as well. Thank you.